definitely is cranked up. We got out here at about 2 or 2.30, and it was kind of slow. I was a little bit concerned, but about an hour later, folks started filing out, and now they're filing into the dome, as you might can see in that ramp behind me. Again, though, as I said, we came here about 2.30, went over to the Bud Bridge. Good combo! And the fans who were out there were in high gear, ready to tear into the Eagles. Lots of dancing going on. We're listening to the Steve Miller Band on that Bud Bridge. Right now, he is performing, and he will later go inside, from what we're told, and do the Star Spangled Banner. We saw a lot of fans, a lot of people hyped up, a lot of locals. We even ran into a guy in town to watch the game who came all the way from Austria. It's my first football game ever. What are your thoughts so far? Uh, it's, it's, it's a great atmosphere here. I just, you, have, you haven't uh, got a, a similar atmosphere in Europe. Maybe the best. This is it. This, this is no, no doubt about it. This is the, the most, uh, most important thing the city's ever done. And the party continues on right now. We've had people actually waiting here for about 30 minutes waiting to cheer, so we're going to give it you a moment. Go ahead, do something. <laughs> To you, I think now, Rich. Okay, Davis. Hey, can you still hear me, Davis? I can. Yes. Hey, I, I know you haven't been watching all of the Steve Miller band, but is he really going to have the gall to play "Fly Like an Eagle" tonight? Has he played that yet? Or? I haven't heard it. I just heard "Swing Town," uh, and that was it. I'm, I got a pretty good ear, so I can tell. Sounds like Rock and Me may be playing right now. Fly like an eagle. I like Fletcher's analogy last night. He said hopefully the Eagles will fly on out of here with a loss later on tonight. So maybe there'll be a twist in there if he does play that, Rich. Okay, thank you very much, Davis. Uh, having a good time out there as well. He should. And that one fan, of course, saying, Jim Moore, eat your heart out. Okay, good enough. Well, another quick check now on the uh, W. A huge scene. When the players arrive, the scene outside the Superdome looks less like a football game and more like a Hollywood premiere. But much like a Hollywood premiere where there are plenty of stars, these Saints fans are ready to see their players shine. Waves of fans clad in black and gold rippled down Poydra Street to catch a glimpse of their beloved Saints arriving for the biggest game of the season to date. What does it mean to, to see all these fans out here that line up hours before the game waiting to see you guys come in? It's a great feeling, you know what I mean? See the hoot right over there? It's, it's fun, it's great. Man, this is great, man. This can't be any better, man. As they have done all season, the Hoodettes, big and small, greeted their heroes with parasol spinning and, of course, deafening cheers. Exciting, exciting for us and exciting for the players. Now as, you, now, as you saw in that piece, all of those cheers were indeed deafening, but some of the cheers turned to boos. One time when an Eagles fan's car drove through the crowd waving their Eagles flags, and another time when someone was bold enough to walk through that Saints crowd wearing Eagles paraphernalia. In the Superdome, I'm from Keeley and I because we've been joined by one of the most popular Saints in franchise history, former linebacker. Everybody watching knows who he is. Number 57, the people yelling at him know who he is. How does it feel to be back here watching the Saints in a divisional playoff game? Well, I mean, it's very exciting. Uh, I'm looking forward to these guys going out winning today, and uh, that's what I came for, to look out a uh, great game. You were part of the Dome Patrol, maybe the best defense in Saints history. This defense has some pretty good linebackers, Fujita, Simino, Shanley. Should they be mentioned in the same breath with you guys, and how big do they have to play today? I mean, not yet. I mean, you know, they, they got to go out and uh, do it uh, consistent. I mean, it's the first year they're doing real well, and I'm uh, proud of them. But we got to see, you know, Got to give them a couple years, see what they're doing. All right. As, as Fletcher and I mentioned a little bit earlier, one of the problems that the Saints have had this year is stopping the run, that huge game that Liddell Bats had when they played the Redskins and lost to the Redskins. Talk about what they're going to have to do to key in on Brian Westbrook in this Eagles run game. Well, basically they're going to have to get a couple turnovers. And uh, if they can win the turnover battle, they'll have a great chance. And uh, they got to try to make sure they script Westbrook and uh, try to get them to get the ball on the ground. That's what the Saints really need today, a couple turnovers from the defense. 
All right, one more quick question before we go. You went to Pitt. You're a Pennsylvania guy, but everybody knows you down here. You're a legend. Quick prediction, if you will. Well, I picked the Saints um, a 34 to 14. All right. Ricky Jackson, All right, number 57. Thank you very much. All right, Keely.